Hello and welcome back everyone. We we online and today I'm going to continue the story What if Naruto was an undercover agent part 2. If you enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload. Now wasting no more time, let's begin. That night, Ochiha Sasuke didn't get much sleep. He had closed his eyes several times and hadn't noticed when they fluttered open, watching the dark room. The wind was blowing outside, reminding him that the warm weather would soon pass and be replaced by the harsh winds of autumn. He sighed and rolled over in his bed, his gaze fixed on the ceiling above his head. Why would Shizuka get herself into such trouble? That was just plain stupid to have a gun. That blonde girl, on the other hand, wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. He remembered how good it felt to have her arm around him. He was well aware that she was several inches taller than him, which bothered him. No, he didn't care. But he had always assumed that he preferred shorter women. So be it. Actually, it wasn't something he had done. Sasuke had never felt anything special for a girl, or for anyone, but he had always expected to. Maybe she was in a bad mood. But what could she have done to justify getting a gun and concealing it beneath her bed? She had to have someone to talk to, didn't she? If she wasn't a mafia member, this made the uneasy bubble in his stomach rumble even louder. Sasuke didn't want to think that way. But if it was true, she was prohibited material. Sasuke had an idea how their net worth had doubled hundreds of times since his brother had taken care of all their money. He wasn't enthusiastic about or interested in his brother's business, but he could make an educated guess, which was all he needed to know. But if Shizuka was from a mafia family families like that weren't uncommon at their school. The mafia was wealthy, and those on the inside, understandably, wanted their children to have a good education. But they mostly took business classes, and Shizuka seemed to take so many that it appeared she didn't put much effort into her studies. But what about the rest of the mafia kids? That is, the one he was aware of. Except for that redhead who had studied to be an architect. He still hadn't come up with anything the next day at school. He had no idea why Shizuka was carrying a gun or what he should do about it. Sasuke ran into her at her usual hangout with the three geeks. Why is she with them in the first place? He mused, irritated. For crying out loud, she was a billionaire. Shizuka's beautiful blue eyes caught his attention, and a dangerous light shone through them. Sasuke moved quickly. He could certainly inquire about it later. Naruto had a terrible night, thanks to Nanohara fucking Shizuka, Aka, Yuzumaki. He hadn't even gotten to his bed yet. He'd sat on the desk all night, arms folded over his computer, as if waiting for someone to come in and shoot him. He'd kept his phone next to him the entire night, afraid Asuma or anyone else would call. Naruto was certain that if he was caught now, he would never be able to live a normal life as a teenager again. But nothing had happened, and Naruto had slept through the night for no apparent reason. Even though he was pretty sure he wouldn't have slept anyway, even if he had tried, he didn't want to admit it. Naruto Uzumaki was never afraid. Never, right? Naruto couldn't recall the last time he was this concerned. Perhaps it could be compared to the first time he was homeless a few years ago, too proud and afraid to ask Asuma for anything. It was the same back then as it was now. I had no idea where to go or who to turn to. I had no idea what would happen. And most of the time, whether something was good or bad, it was just so wonderful that you didn't care. That's how it felt right now. He wished for something to happen, good or bad, just something to happen. He sighed. This was driving him insane. And when Naruto looked Sasuke in the eyes across the schoolyard, he begged him. Please, speak up. Make things happen. Damn you, Uchiha, for being such a coward. He had just fled. Naruto laughed, scolded for something, like a dog with its tail between its legs. He made a shaky motion with his head. If Sasuke didn't talk to him, he'd either talk to him or force him to come to him. Of course, not everything went as planned. It's similar to reading a book. Consider a mystery novel. Something occurs, and a significant time clue appears. You think to yourself, oh, I know who the murderer is, and turn the page with glee. There is a term for such situations. It begins with a W and ends with a R. Naruto was still enraged by the whole thing. He had concluded that everything was Sasuke's fault. He'd crushed Naruto's precious balls, not because he was a sneaky bastard. Crushing them resulted in Naruto splashing orange juice on Sasuke who then poured ramen on Naruto's balls, resulting in Naruto's vengeance, which resulted in Sasuke being alone in Naruto's room and being a sneaky bastard. It was, of course, all Sasuke's fault, and probably Naruto's as well, given his shoddy hiding spot for his gun, and Asuma's, because he'd brought the damned thing with him, and Orochimaru's, because he was the one who got him into this school in the first place. This Shizuka, the principal needs to see you right away. 
As Naruto followed Shizune into the principal's office, he pushed his problems to the back of his mind. It looked exactly the same as when he first arrived five weeks ago, but this time there was a new face. Tsunade sat in her chair, a bottle of beer next to her, making Naruto question her job eligibility once more, and a figure stood by the window, whom Naruto assumed was a man. The man wore a black business suit and had long, shaggy white hair. Naruto could see the man's arms folded over his chest, and he was quietly humming a popular song that was constantly playing on the radio. Shizune returned to her desk, which was to the left of the principals, and smiled at him. How nice to see you, Shizuka, exclaimed Tsunade. Naruto wondered if she was drunk because she seemed to be having a good time for once. When he had met her, she had been either pissed, serious, or just plain evil. I'd like you to meet someone, Shizuka. This is Jiraiya, the owner of the school. The man by the window turned around in slow motion, as if he were in a movie. He probably thinks he is, Naruto thought, making a face at the hideous pink shirt he was wearing beneath his otherwise handsome costume. He was also wearing makeup, with two red streaks running down from his eyes to his cheekbones. However, Naruto didn't have much time to observe the character before the curious old man appeared next to him, right behind his shoulder. My, my, he exclaimed. Naruto estimated the man's age to be in his fifties based on his hoarse voice. Such a sweet young lady, he said as he grabbed Naruto's buttocks and squeezed them in his large old hand. Everything came to a halt for a split second. Naruto's eyes blinked. Once, twice. Then he grabbed the vile man's arm and threw him over his shoulder. Naruto was used to wrestling much bigger men than himself, so this shouldn't have been a problem. But the pervert's grip on his arse only tightened, causing both of them to collapse on the floor. Naruto was crushed beneath the large body, but he quickly escaped. He managed to kick the man off of him and was about to turn around and kick him in the jewels when he was stopped by two hands. Jiraiya, the white-haired man, grinned as he flipped Naruto around, sneaking a peek beneath his skirt while he was still spinning through the air, landing on the floor with a loud oof. Yeah, I like strong ladies. Jiraiya exclaimed happily as Naruto struggled to sit up. This is the new girl I was telling you about, Jiraiya. The boy, you remember, sighed Tsunade, who hadn't said or done anything the entire time. Jiraiya's face screwed up in disgust as Naruto watched him with his dirtiest glare. He snorted and walked over to Tsunade, his pride slightly dented. He glared at Naruto, who had just gotten back to his feet. I didn't think you were pretty in the first place, Jiraiya exclaimed childishly. You didn't complain about my ass, retorted Naruto. Both men stuck their tongues out at each other, almost making them jump again. Tsunade, on the other hand, stopped them by slamming a heavy folder on her desk. Enough, she exclaimed, causing both men to come to a halt. She raised her big brown eyes to Naruto. Shizuka, I wanted you to come here today because I wanted you to meet Jiraiya. Naruto glared at Jiraiya, who happily returned his gaze. Tsunade let out a sigh. She should have known those two wouldn't get along because they were so similar. Since he is the owner of the school, God knows why, I thought you should get to meet him. Because he is the one who came up with the idea of letting you come here in the first place, she continued. Naruto's glare had faded, and he was now surprised, this old pervert. Would you like me to reconsider? Snorted Jiraiya. Perhaps I do. Perhaps I will. Tsunade took a new beer from one of the drawers, looking for some solace. This would require some time. They were finally finished two hours later, with Naruto and Jiraiya deciding to find a place to clear some things up and Tsunade kicking them out of her office. The white-haired man and the blonde were still bickering about things they couldn't care less about when the younger of them noticed someone approaching them from behind Jiraiya. Sasuke was there. Jiraiya also came to a halt, saw the young man, and walked away, muttering something about cross-dressing brats. Sasuke watched the school's owner leave, wondering what kind of business Shizuka could have with him. They appeared to be fighting, implying that Shizuka was in some sort of trouble. Did the owner, as well as the principal and vice principal, learn about the gun? Uchiha, his head shot up, his name jolting him out of his reverie, and he looked the girl in the eyes. He couldn't detect any emotion in them, and Shizuka gave him an empty stare. Waiting. Danohara, he explained, why he cut himself off and bit his bottom lip as he stared at the wall to his right. Why do you have a gun in your room? He waited for Shizuka to respond patiently, but when she didn't, he turned his head and looked at her. She appeared distressed and then looked down at the ground. That's none of your business, Uchiha, she finally said. Perhaps it became my business when I found out, Sasuke grumbled. The fact that you are a sneaky bastard makes no difference. Perhaps it does. And, Uchiha, what are you going to do about it? Sasuke came to a sudden halt. Really, what was he going to do? Should he inform someone? But if Shizuka was in such serious trouble that she needed a gun to defend herself, it would be terrible to turn her in. 
But what if someone is injured? Maybe she was a psycho, she didn't look like one. But how does a crazy person look? He believed he could blackmail her. But what if she was actually dangerous? She'd gotten into his room in the middle of the night, which was strange. If he blackmailed her, she might jump him. When several images of Shizuka jumping him flashed through his mind, Sasuke grunted. Damn, yes, he finally said after a while. What will I do? I'm guessing I can just open this door and tell the principal, he explained. Or I could blackmail you. Hey, but what would I get from that? You're such an idiot. I don't think I would achieve anything by doing that, Sasuke continued. Naruto, who had been tense for a few days, snapped and began his second fight that afternoon. Naruto, who was also in a bad mood, drew one hand back and crushed it into Sasuke's face with full force. Sasuke was thrown backwards, but he quickly rose to his feet and charged Naruto. Sasuke was scowling, and his eyes were almost bloodshot with rage. Uchiha Sasuke, she dared to hit him. This girl was willing to pay. Shizuka blocked Sasuke's punch and hit him in the stomach, causing him to lose his breath. He doubled over, coughing, before lunging at the girl, who flew backwards from the impact, with him on top of her. They continued to fight, and Sasuke even pulled Shizuka's hair, leaving Naruto slightly relieved that it didn't fall off, before a pile of books was dropped on them. Naruto groaned and sat up, having gotten an extra large one in his head. Sasuke, whose hand was now crushed beneath Shizuka's buttocks, screamed angrily and freed it. When both students looked up, one very angry teacher looked down on them. Despite growing up poor and without parents, Yumino Aruka received a high-quality education. Because society had discovered his brilliance at such a young age, they decided to see how far he could go. Aruka, who was in his late 20s at the time, was one of the best teachers at Deciduous Forest Special University. He was overjoyed when he got the job. DFSU was one of the most well-known schools in the country, if not the world, and was known for its elegant architecture and brilliant students. And no brilliant students fought in front of the principal's office. Are you fucking crazy? And cute blonde schoolgirls did not use such language. There was only one word to describe this situation. Detention. Student A claims that student B is wearing an unflattering hat. What is student B's reaction? A remove your hat. B cry and then leave. C inform student that he or she is ugly all over. D all of the aforementioned. Naruto crunched the paper in his hands and tossed it across the room. This fucking stinks. I wouldn't mind if student B went off to fuck himself. That's not eligible, Sasuke said, looking at his own paper. Naruto growled and reached for Sasuke's paper, intending to give it the same treatment he had given his own but Sasuke saved it from his big, hungry hands. Naruto gave up, leaned back in his chair, and glared angrily at the clock that hung over the door. They'd been here for nearly two hours, going through a folder full of stupid questions. Worse, Sasuke was actually taking this seriously, answering every question after much deliberation. First time you've gotten a detention, sneered Naruto. So what if it is? Irritated Sasuke, looking up from the sheet. Really? Naruto blinked a few times before responding. Man, you're not just sneaky, you're a geek. It's not geeky, Sasuke said, adding after a moment's thought, and I'm not sneaky either. Naruto laughed and pressed his finger into Sasuke's upper arm. Sasuke reacted angrily, glaring angrily at Naruto for touching him. Geek, Naruto said with a smile. Sasuke sighed and tucked his folder away, as if he had something to prove. If you came from a family like mine, you would know I can't get detention. Sasuke shook his head, not sure why he was telling Shizuka this. What is your family like then? Naruto inquired, moving closer to Sasuke. Sasuke looked into her eyes, wondering if she was serious, but seeing no teasing in them, he continued. Well, they all died when I was 13, except for my brother, and I'm guessing your brother sent you here. Sasuke let out a sigh. Shizuka was sometimes painfully slow, but every now and then she nailed it. Itachi is the one who brought me here. He looked around the room, trying not to look at the blonde girl who was watching him. The classroom they sat in, like the others, was well lit, and it was on the first floor of the first building. It was a large room that was rarely used. You don't appear to be overjoyed to be here. Sasuke, on the other hand, was not. He wanted to get out of this school right away, or as soon as possible. He didn't care about his education. He was intelligent enough to get any job he wanted. And the name Uchiha also helped a lot, which was another thing he disliked about being here. The teachers had high expectations of you as Uchiha Sasuke. They pressed you harder, making you work longer hours than the others. All Sasuke wanted at times was to be a nobody. He kept me here. You don't seem to like him either. Sasuke wished he could strangle her. How could she say things like that, reading him as if she'd known him her entire life? He looked down at the desk, on his hands folded over it, before returning his gaze to hers. I want to murder him. 
Naruto had only heard those five words spoken in that tone once before, and it was the first time Orochimaru had given him orders to kill someone who had threatened him. I want to kill him, he smirked. But you'll be the one to do it, she says. It was terrible to want to kill a member of your own family. And Naruto's eyes softened when he saw the pale, dark-haired boy. He'd never met anyone like Sasuke, who trapped his own emotions in the same way his brother had in this school. Naruto assumed that his brother, Itachi Sasuke, had done more than just bring him here to make Sasuke want to kill him. That, however, was none of Naruto's concern. I grew up with my father, Sasuke, he said, not daring to look to see if Sasuke was even listening. My mother died giving birth to me, and my father never really recovered. My father was also not cut out to raise a child, and I was frequently left home alone, with only my neighbor to look after me. He chuckled, though she was more interested in her cats. Then my father died. He was a police officer, a good one, they told me, and I felt ashamed. I had never really tried to get close to my father, never tried anything. I had thrown away the only time we had together, and then he was just gone. He tilted his head and looked at Sasuke, who was sad. I'm sorry, the raven apologized. It's not your fault, Naruto said, shaking his head. I just wanted you to understand that whatever your brother has done to you, he is still your brother, your family. You don't have any other family except him, and it would be sad if you threw it away like I did. When your father died, how old were you? Five. But Shizuka, you were so young. You couldn't have known Sasuke was cut off by Naruto's embarrassed expression. The girl's life had been a nightmare. He sighed slightly and brushed his bangs away from his face. Sasuke, he's your only family. All right, I'll think about it. Shizuka's face brightened as he spoke, her sorrowful past forgotten. She then ripped two pages from his folder. Sasuke, make a paper plane. Sasuke couldn't help but fold the paper into a plane because she sounded so happy. Shizuka finished by handing him a pencil. Write Itachi's name on it now. Sasuke asked Shizuka a question, but when she didn't respond, he wrote the name Itachi on the side of the white thing. Shizuka had also folded a piece of paper into a plane and written the word father on it. Then she grabbed Sasuke's warm hand and dragged him out of the detention room. But Shizuka, Mr. Yumino will be there soon and, he began, but was cut off when she dragged him up to the highest floor. When she looked up at the ceiling, searching for something, he didn't even question her behavior. She found what she was looking for and drew a ladder from the ceiling, motioning him to climb up ahead of her. Sasuke thought this was fair because she was still wearing her school skirt. As he climbed the ladder, he came to a halt in front of a door. Shizuka pressed up against him before punching the trap door open, and light shone on them. When Sasuke opened his eyes and saw an incredible sight, he felt his hair blow. They were looking out the large building's roof, and he could see all the way past the sports field to the deciduous forest named after the school, which never seemed to end. Shizuka was pressed up against him, laughing in a hoarse, beautiful voice. Let it go. Naruto yelled over the howling wind, launching the paper airplane into the air. Sasuke looked at him before releasing his grip. They laughed as the white planes flew away, at the absurdity of the whole thing. Naruto had never imagined a man like Sasuke could laugh like this, but the raven was in tears of joy. Then he smiled and turned to Naruto. Naruto had never seen such a lovely smile before. He was so close to me. Oh dear. The next day, that beautiful smile with the soft pink lips and the flashing white teeth flashed through his mind for the hundredth time. Naruto knew exactly why Sasuke didn't smile. Girls would die at his feet if he went around smiling like that. Boys would become gay, lesbians would become straight and boys who were already gay would love the Uchiha more than their mothers, perhaps. Yeah. Naruto groaned and pounded his head against the nearest wall several times. As he did so, his long blonde hair fell into his eyes, and his head began to throb even more. He hadn't gotten any sleep either tonight. He couldn't stop thinking about Sasuke. Why? Why on earth was he thinking about him? Oh, that grin. Right? He sucked in his bottom lip and bit down hard, not wincing from the pain. He remembered what he told Sasuke the day before when they parted. About the gun, Sasuke he had explained. Sasuke had tilted his head slightly, but that was all he got. When they came down from the roof, the raven's face had become emotionless once more. I'll tell you when I'm ready, okay? Sasuke had nodded, seemingly content. As if Naruto was going to tell Sasuke about the gun. Because, in the end, that was the issue. He could never reveal his true identity to Sasuke. Naruto could never introduce himself as Yuzumaki Naruto to Sasuke. He'd never be able to prove to Sasuke that he was a man. And he couldn't let Sasuke pass through his skin, veins, and heart. He could already tell that Sasuke had gotten too close. Probably not on purpose, but when he smiled at Naruto with the wind in his hair, Naruto realized that this was not something Sasuke did casually. 
he couldn't allow Sasuke to get too close. Kiba, Chaoji, and Shikamaru were all fine. They didn't care about him in that way. Sure, they were his friends, but they kept to themselves and didn't bother him with anything. The Uchiha hadn't gotten that far yet, but he could hear the warning sirens in the back of his mind. Worse, Naruto knew why they had called. It wasn't just because Sasuke was curious, but also because of how Naruto was starting to feel about him. He was terrified by the thought, because if Sasuke ever wanted to get into Naruto's heart, Naruto would most likely let him. All because Sasuke was unique. In some ways, yes, and being aware of this fact terrified Naruto. He realized he had sunk to the floor, his body now resting against the great pound wall. Naruto shook his head, shaking away images of what, or rather who, he could pound against, the great pound wall, and rose from the floor. He dusted his skirt as his gaze was drawn to a redhead who was staring at him. He'd seen the redhead before, but he'd never really acknowledged him. He'd been just another face in the crowd, like everyone else. Naruto didn't know many people in that class, but he had spoken to a few of them. The redhead guy, on the other hand, appeared to be very quiet and, at times, very alone. The teacher arrived just as Naruto was about to ask him what he was looking at. Mr. Hagen, also known as Kotsu, was the design and handicraft instructor. As the head of the design department at the school, he taught several classes, and Naruto liked him. He now put a hand on Naruto's shoulder, scaring him so much that he threw his books and papers all over the place, gasping in terror as Kotsu laughed happily. Now, now, Miss Shizuka, you can't go around scared like that. Naruto growled, furrowing his brows. What kind of teacher would intentionally scare their students? When Kotsu looked at him, his eyes darkened. Class starts now, so hurry up and get that. Naruto's hands followed the man's neck as he walked into the classroom but he resisted the urge to strangle him and instead dropped to the floor, gathering his papers and books. Freaking teacher, he thought as he stumbled into the classroom as the last one, holding everything in a jumbled heap in his arms. Every pair of eyes followed him, and he cursed mentally as he noticed that almost every seat was taken. Naruto hurried to the first empty seat his eyes could find after Kotsu cleared his throat. It was in the classroom's back row, closest to the windows. Because the subject required a lot of group projects, the desks in the classroom were ordered two by two. Naruto noticed that he had chosen the seat next to the redhead guy when he sat down quickly, trying not to drop his things again. The boy stared at him, and Naruto noticed that he had dark circles under his eyes, which he'd tried in vain to conceal with a thick layer of pitch black eyeliner. His shockingly reed bangs hung over his brow, and he noticed a tattoo of some kind, with a Chinese or Japanese symbol. He also had extremely green eyes. Naruto took a few seconds to realize the redhead had spoken to him. What? I said, fuck off, the guy snarled in hushed tones. Naruto began to become perplexed. Why? What had he done? It's none of your business, go away. None of your business, Naruto said emphatically. I'm not leaving. If you want me to leave, you better have one good reason. Naruto looked up for a second, then added, unless you have lice. That would probably make me leave too, but maybe that is a good reason. The redhead growled, and several children shifted in their seats. Because Naruto didn't bother to whisper, the word lice spread quickly throughout the room. I don't have lice, the redhead snarled, attempting to save his pride and reputation. But if anyone has lice, it's you. Naruto could only speculate as to why. I'm not moving, he said, leaving the lice to their own devices. He leaned back in his seat, making himself comfortable, to demonstrate that he wouldn't move an inch. The redhead's eyes became slits. I'm a murderer, what's the point? Naruto faced him with his hands folded behind his neck. A murderer, you say? He smirked slightly. No, that's not good enough. For a split second, the other guy's eyes widened. This was most likely the first time someone didn't put their legs on their back and flee when they heard these words. His surprise was quickly replaced by a scowl. I'll probably lose control and kill you, he predicted. Not unless I kill you first, Naruto replied. Hanging around me will give you a bad reputation, the redhead said, biting his lip. It couldn't get any worse than this. The boy looked at him, puzzled. And the new girl, Naruto explained further. This would undoubtedly silence the other person. He'd most likely heard something about Naruto. Naruto didn't seem to mind. He'd never had a good reputation in his life, so why should it matter now? For a while, the redhead guy was quiet, and Naruto began to pay attention to the teacher. I'm not a good person to be around. I believe I'll be the one to make that decision. My father is also a murderer. My father has also killed people. Naruto was beginning to find this amusing. The poor guy was actually making a concerted effort to get him to leave. Well, my father is a fantastic mafia boss. Naruto's entire body tensed up. Mafia, you say? Maybe this guy wasn't such a bad guy after all. 
not in Naruto's current position. And where have you gone, dad? The redhead appeared pleased with the response he had received. In jail, Naruto felt himself unwind. He was suddenly overcome with the desire to humiliate this man. Well, my father most likely put him there. It was now the redhead's turn to tense up. Naruto could only speculate on what was going through his mind. A cop's daughter, you say? Probably not the best company for someone whose father was a mafia member. The redhead experimented with a new route. My mother died while I was being born. What a coincidence. Mine as well. Naruto laughed. I haven't seen my father since I was 10 years old. Naruto leaned in close and whispered something into his ear. My father is no longer alive. Naruto had won the battle 8 minutes 0. Would you two turtle doves mind being quiet and listening down there? Naruto and the redhead both ignored the teacher. The redhead smirked and extended his hand to Naruto, who gratefully accepted it. Sabakuno Gara, he said as he introduced himself. It's a pleasure to meet you, Nanohara Shizuka. Naruto forced Gara to accompany him to meet his gang after class. Naruto was aware that they were anticipating his arrival because they always met during the breaks. When the two boys approached, his three friends raised an eyebrow. Chaoji dropped his bag of chips, and Kiba choked on the candy he'd just put in his mouth. Ah, Kiba exclaimed, Who's your friend, Shizuka? You know who I am. In Yuzuka, Gara snarled, wondering why he had followed the blonde-haired chick to these jerks. Kiba narrowed his eyes and pouted, I guess I do, as Naruto smiled at them. Come on, he said, waving his arms, it can't be that bad. You can't get a worse reputation hanging out with Gara here than you would hanging out with me. Chaoji nodded thoughtfully as he picked up his forgotten bag of chips. For the first time, Shizuka's words made sense. Nanohara, Gara explained. What? He's in a relationship with my sister. Gara pointed at Shikamaru, who, for the first time, changed his bored expression and looked guiltily sideways. Naruto grinned and smacked Shikamaru across the shoulder. You don't say, exclaimed he. You didn't tell me you had a girlfriend, Shikamaru. Shikamaru rubbed his sore shoulder while staring at Naruto. Perhaps I had a reason, he grumbled, making Kiba laugh. Naruto turned to Gara, who was still staring angrily at Shikamaru, and pounded his back, causing him to fall forward into Shikamaru's knee. Gara's sharp chin dug into Shikamaru's thigh, causing Shikamaru to wince in pain. Gara also landed rather sharply on the ground, which meant that the fall injured not only his chin but also his knees. The brunette and redhead glared angrily at Naruto who only laughed along with Kiba and Chaoji. Look, you already share something, Naruto exclaimed. Shikamaru and Gara both looked at him as he continued, you both are weaker than a girl. The two boys threw themselves at him to tickle him rather than hurt him. It was frightening how they could have guessed Naruto was horribly ticklish, and soon Naruto couldn't even breathe from all the struggling and laughing. Naruto finally got out from under the two boys and rested on his hands and knees, catching his breath. Gara and Shikamaru had gone over to tickle each other, which surprised Naruto because the two of them were both very quiet and stoic characters. Kiba and Chaoji were cheering them on, and Naruto was about to join them when he noticed something bothering him in his eye corner. Of course, it was Sasuke, as it had been the previous time, and the image of Sasuke's smiling face entered his mind once more, and he felt a flush creep up his cheeks. Sasuke was staring at him and walking towards him, a faint smile on his lips. Naruto became aware that he was out of breath. Why? Why did Sasuke have to be so incredibly attractive? Why wouldn't he leave Naruto's heart alone and not even try to steal it? Why was he so overjoyed to see Naruto? All of Naruto's blood had now flowed to his face. He had no choice but to leave. He couldn't let Sasuke go that far. He quickly returned to his friends. I forgot something in the classroom. He hurried his words, take care of Gara for me. Before they could say anything else, Naruto waved at them and ran away, leaving four silent boys and one confused Uchiha Sasuke behind him. What on earth is her problem? Two pairs of eyes followed him around his room, only stopping now and then to randomly kick the chair Sai was sitting on. No, it wasn't Sai's fault. The black-haired boy had only chosen a bad spot to sit, directly in the path of Sasuke's rage. The three pale, dark-haired boys were currently spending their afternoon in Sasuke's room, which at least two of them regretted. Are you sure you're not overacting, Sasuke? Neji inquired. For weeks, neither Sai nor he had received any other reaction from the Uchiha, and despite the fact that they weren't the closest of friends, the two of them had grown concerned. Neji had met Sasuke at school the year he started second grade, and Sasuke had just started first. Neji had been given the honor of showing the new students around the school because he was a year older and also the youngest all-class representative. He had been introduced to the young Uchiha fairly early on. 
Sasuke had been quiet, calm, and incredibly hardworking, just like him. He'd never gotten to know Sasuke very well, and all he knew about him was that he despised both this school and his brother. But Neji had never seen Sasuke act like this before. Uchiha's normally pale face had turned beet red with rage, and he had practically stopped all of his schoolwork. And who caused Sasuke to behave in this manner? It's none other than Nanohara Shizuka. Even though the girl had only been at the school for two months, she had succeeded in screwing the raven's head up. And Neji had to admit that Miss Nanohara had impressed him as well. Neji looked compassionately at Sai, whose chair had been kicked again, nearly knocking him off. The Hyuga wasn't sure whether he should be happy or sad that Sai hadn't met the new girl yet. I'm not overacting, snarled Sasuke as Neji grabbed the back of his pants and dragged him down onto the bed. He wasn't supposed to be on Sasuke's bed, but since Sasuke hadn't said anything yet. I believe you are, Sasuke, Sai said, smiling as usual, I haven't seen you this worked up since Sai fell silent. We've never seen you like this before, Neji said in place of Sai. Sasuke closed his eyes and flopped onto the bed, his legs still on the floor. He opened and closed his mouth several times before settling for a heavy sigh instead. Sai approached them, crawling onto the bed alongside the other two. He smiled as he bent down over Sasuke. Never. Would you like to share your thoughts, Sasu? Veggie inwardly gasped when Sasuke only glared at Sai at the nickname. Sai would be a patient in the nurse's office right now if Sasuke had been himself. Instead, the duck butt sighed once more. She's completely ignoring me. The sentence was followed by a long pause. Sai and Neji locked their gazes on each other. They never imagined that they would one day assist Sasuke with his girl problems. Who? Sai asked, dumbfounded. Neji rolled his eyes, as did Sasuke, who didn't even bother answering. One day she's all nice and I'm not sure actually okay. Thinking a girl was okay was a huge step for Sasuke. And then she just avoids me, as if I did something wrong. Neji leaned back against the dark wall, contemplating. That was, in fact, very strange. Any girl at school would be overjoyed if Sasuke showed this much interest in her. But this girl had them completely perplexed. It was almost as if she could withstand Sasuke's manly charm, as if a mosquito could withstand lamplight. How come you let her get under your skin, Sasu? Before Sasuke finished thinking, the question hung in the air for a few minutes. I honestly have no idea. That was correct. Sasuke couldn't figure out why he'd let her get under his skin. He had never let anyone get too close to his heart since he was 13 years old. He'd suffocated the large muscle inside his chest. Even Neji and Sai couldn't go any deeper inside than they already were. Perhaps it was because Shizuka had opened her heart to him. Maybe her being so open-minded, light-hearted, and simply happy made his heart want to follow her. Maybe he felt special because she had shared a piece of her childhood with him. But, in the end, he didn't even know who she was. That story she told him could have been made up. She wasn't particularly attractive, but Sasuke found himself wanting to see her smile directed at him over and over. Her tan skin exacerbated her desire, as did her bright blonde hair and those stunning blue eyes. Both Sai and Neji jumped as Sasuke abruptly sat up in the bed. He could feel their eyes looking at him questioningly. Maybe he was actually attracted to her. She was tall, she had long, nice legs. She looked funny, but in a way, very charming. Thinking of Shizuka naked in his bed made his face turn red again and his heart sped up. His pale hand found its way to his lips. Oh god, Sasuke was up on his both feet and running out of the door. He didn't care that he left both Neji and Sai in his room. His legs moved on their own to Shizuka's room, knocking several times on the door. When he didn't get a reaction from either the door or anyone who could be on the other side, he ran out into the schoolyard. It was afternoon, and he couldn't imagine where the stupid chick could be. But one thing he was certainly sure of was that this time she couldn't avoid him. Running through the yard which was now empty, Sasuke stopped. What was he thinking? That he could find her by just running. He had no clue where she could be. He didn't even know where she usually went when she wasn't in her room. Sasuke ran a frustrated hand though his hair. He was almost certain that he was beginning to hate her. Not caring what he did at the moment, he sat down in the grass, his hands laid over his knees. How could she make him lose his head like that? Here he was, a desperate man sitting in the grass in full view of everyone inside, chasing after some weird girl. Sasuke shut his eyes tightly and let his body fall down on the ground. Groaning, he turned his head to the left and opened his eyes. A pair of sock-clad legs was seen behind a building. For those wondering why Naruto was currently sitting underneath a tree, sleeping in the cold autumn air it was rather simple. When he had been walking back to his dorm that same afternoon, he had seen Sasuke, Neji and some other dark-haired guy and he had stopped dead in his tracks. He had managed to successfully avoid Sasuke for some weeks now, and he was not going to fail today. 
Before any of the boys could turn around and spot him, Naruto had bounced back outside again, only to be met by a half-empty schoolyard. There was no chance that his friends were still outside, not when the weather was turning so cold at this time of year, making them change their meeting spot. No, for as far as Naruto knew, he was really alone, and he was also really tired. Having the feeling of always being chased by Sasuke made it hard for him to seep. He had made his way to the other side of the medicine building, just wandering about. He wondered if this was what the rest of the year would be like. It was fine during lessons, he didn't have any together with Sasuke. Gara and the three Brennets got along fine with each other, so they weren't a problem. Naruto had even met Shikamaru's girlfriend and Gara's sister, Temuri, and Kiba had confessed that he too had a second half, a shy girl named Hyuga Hinata, who turned out to be Neji's cousin. How those two ended up together was beyond his imagining, but he guessed that sometimes people just matched. Naruto didn't dare to think like that about him and Sasuke. However, he had been brought back from his thoughts by a giant oak standing proudly. The leaves had turned orange, brown, yellow and red, some of them having fallen onto the grass. This, he had thought whilst looking up at the beautiful tree, would be alright to nap under. And it was like that Sasuke found him two hours later, sleeping peacefully. Sasuke watched her chest rise and fall from her deep breathing, and a warm feeling settled inside his chest. This was the second time he'd found her sleeping, and she was as charming now as then. She had her school uniform on, and was hugging herself tightly to somewhat escape from the chilly wind. Her blonde hair fell over her tan face, and her pink lips pouted slightly. This time she didn't drool though. Sasuke didn't know what he was going to do, wake her up or let her be. But evening was approaching, and the sun was setting. It would be pretty cold soon. He knelt down next to her. She shifted slightly under his gaze, but she didn't seem to wake up. She actually looked to be caught in a deep sleep, as though she wouldn't wake up if he didn't do anything. Being so much closer to her, Sasuke was enchanted by lips that looked so soft. Would he dare? Would he dare to do something he would never have thought he would ever try? Would he dare to kiss her? Just a little. On her lips. Just for once become a thief and steal something. A kiss. Slowly inching closer, Sasuke shakily breathed out as his lips met hers. They really were soft, almost softer than he would have believed. A tingle went from the contact between their lips to his brain traveling further down to his toes. To think that a small thing like a kiss would have such a big impact on him. Not being able to hold back anymore, he pressed closer, enjoying the contact more than he had enjoyed anything before. Naruto himself was floating on a cloud up in the sky. He didn't know what was happening, but he felt really good. Something was trying to bring him back from the heaven, and when he opened his eyes, he found an angel kissing his lips. Pale skin so close to him, dark hair brushing his forehead. It felt wonderful. Naruto pressed back, satisfied with the mule that was suddenly heard from the angel. It was a shame angels didn't exist. If they did, he would definitely take this one home and kiss it forever. But angels didn't exist as far as he knew. And the human in front of him was none other than Uchiha Sasuke. When reality at last hit him, he placed his two large hands on Sasuke's shoulders and pushed him away. The Uchiha fell down on his butt with a surprised yelp, and Naruto was quick to stand up and brush off his skirt. Sasuke looked up at him from the ground, smirking. What the hell do you think you're doing you fucking bastard? Sasuke shivered at the low voice Shizuka had used. Sasuke didn't answer, just continued to smirk happily. Shizuka's eyes were blazing, but Sasuke could see that it wasn't from anger directed at Sasuke himself. No, that anger he had seen when he had found the gun. This was different. Naruto growled and stomped away. Behind him he heard Sasuke inhale some air, before he yelled. There's no need to stay away from me Shizuka. Naruto continued walking, ignoring the Uchiha. Whenever you close your eyes, I'll be there to steal a kiss. Naruto let out a frustrated howl before he turned around the corner of the building. Sasuke remained in his spot underneath the tree. Yes, Shizuka had been mad. But Sasuke was neither worried nor scared because he had felt Shizuka respond in the kiss. Sasuke gazed at him through half-lidded eyes from where he sat between his legs. Naruto's pants were pulled down to his ankles, and Sasuke blew gently on his throbbing cock, and smirked when Naruto moaned. The raven stuck out his tongue and licked up half of the precum that was beginning to pour down the blonde's length. You can't believe how good you taste, Naruto, Sasuke whispered. Leaving Naruto's member, he crawled up the tan body and looked deep into Naruto's blue eyes. Oh god, want to believe, Sasuke whispered in his ear, before he pressed his soft lips against Naruto's, his tongue that tasted like Naruto himself swiping over his lips, before he invited it inside his mouth. Naruto moaned and bucked his hips against Sasuke's groin, and the friction became wonderful, 
and Sasuke moaned into his mouth, and his cock felt so, so incredibly good. Pulsating, throbbing, awakening, Naruto bolted up from the bed, breathing heavily. The head of his cock was aching unbearably, and his member was still twitching underneath the blanket that was raised in a small tent. Just that friction alone almost made Naruto come. Not knowing what to do, Naruto threw the blanket off, stumbling towards the shower as he pulled his clothes off on the way. He couldn't think properly, the feeling of just being pulled back from sleep and the aching between his legs from him being so damned horny made it impossible. Naruto now being naked turned on the shower and let the warm spray of water wash over him, as he fisted himself. Finally being able to touch himself, the sweat being cleaned off his body was wonderful, sending pleasurable jolts through his back. His body leaned onto the glazed tiles, his back arching away from it as his thumb stroked directly over the slit on the head. Never in his whole life had it felt this good. Naruto could see Sasuke sitting on his knees like he had in his dream, taking the whole morning problem into his mouth, sucking, licking, humming, biting. His legs gave out under him when he came, spraying thick ribbons of cum through the still pouring water. Naruto's whole body shook, and he breathed out the name of the man of his dreams. Even when his orgasm was finished, he still trembled and jerked on the floor, pressing out the last drops from his cock. Before he relaxed on the floor, the tan hands fell down to his sides, and he turned his head up to meet the water. Oh god. When Naruto 40 minutes later was finished with his morning routine, he slumped down in the bed, looking tiredly on the alarm clock that hadn't even rung yet. The dream had woken him up earlier than he had thought, and there were at least one and a half hours before his first lesson started. Today he had medicine with Sakura's class, and after that his day would be over. At least the school day would be. Usually, he would have social studies, the class he liked the most, but it had been cancelled, since the teacher, a guy named Hadek Kakashi, had told the class that he would probably be sick today. He had told them that a week ago. It wasn't that it was Kakashi who made the class interesting, no. Naruto was just interesting in social studies, partly because he already knew pretty much everything about it and didn't have to study as hard for it, partly because he really wanted to know more about it. And it was also a big plus that Sakura didn't have any of those classes with him. Naruto also found it a relief that he didn't have any classes with the business students. Now he had a whole afternoon free, and that afternoon would probably be spent thinking of Sasuke and what to do about him, something Naruto wasn't looking forward to at all. Naruto closed his eyes and sighed. Sasuke had kissed him last night. Naruto didn't know if he should be flattered or angry. What kind of creepy dude snuck up on a girl and stole a kiss anyway? Not that Naruto hadn't kissed someone before. Naruto had kissed several people, both girls and guys had met his lips over the last four years. His first kiss had been taken by a girl, Asuma's son Konohamaru had told him that the time he kissed the dog on its mouth didn't really count. He had taken care of her on a crime scene when he was 13 years old. She had been so grateful that he was there, she had rewarded him with a kiss. Not long after that, puberty had hit him like a train, but never in his life had Naruto felt like he had when Sasuke kissed him. I even thought the bastard was an angel, he thought as he laid down on his made bed. Sasuke had been gentle, careful and almost loving, but he didn't even know Naruto. And that was pretty obvious, since he didn't even know that the lovely girl Shizuka had a cock hidden underneath her skirt. The dream didn't make it better either. There was only one explanation left. Naruto closed one of his eyes and begun to count the boards in the ceiling. Either he was attracted to Sasuke, or he was falling in love with him and he wished to God that it wasn't the latter. It was amazing really, the amount of orphans who attended at the Deciduous Forest Special University. For being a school made for rich young men and women it was surprising how many of them had guardians who were rich. Maybe it had something to do with rich society. A man and a woman, often not having a children of their own, being seen on the covers of magazines all the time. Rumors begin to fly, and suddenly the happy family has a lot of dark secrets out in the blue. How to make it better? Adopt an orphan. Take Sai for example. He had grown up without parents. He had been left on the doorstep of an orphanage as a newborn and had been taken care of by the nice old big lady Yah Wright. The only reason she had been working there was because a judge had ordered her to fill her community service there after she had abused her poor husband. Sai had been living there for most of his life. The change came when an old man entered the building. Sai had been 11 years old that time, and had been one of the oldest kids in the orphanage. The woman had suddenly started to behave like she never had before. She began to curtsy herself backwards, mumbling all kinds of apologies about the place being so dirty, having nothing edible or potable to offer, and the ugly filthy kids. The list had been long, 
and Sai, being as old as he was, had lately been used for different kinds of house duties. Wearing a red apron, he dashed to the man with the warm sheet metal when the owner had yelled at him. Normally he would not have been in the kitchen, baking, but this was Sunday, and the woman was fond of sweets. Of course they had something edible to offer. Sai had held the metal sheet in front of the man, and the man had taken a cookie and eyed it. It was formed as a perfect little tiger with tail, ears, and stripes. I'll take him, the man had said. Sai didn't mind that he was being used only for the man to look good in the press. He got money when he asked for it. He was able to live under really good conditions, and he got a really good education and was expected to be a famous artist one day. And being able to create the way Sai could, there was no doubt that it was his own talent that would make him attractive in the art world, and not his guardian. In Sai's life, there had been only two important people to him. One was the woman and the other one was the man. He didn't even call his guardian by name. He didn't think that was fair, since he hadn't even been allowed to use his guardian's last name. But after he had arrived at this school, things had been different. He had met Achiha Sasuke and Hyuga Neji, two people that were actually worthy enough for him to name. The two raven-haired boys had taken care of him, and he had become their friend. And Sai didn't even believe that they were friends with him because of his dad. That was the main reason why Sai found himself being so interested in this Nanohara Shizuka. She had made Sasuke, the Uchiha Sasuke, almost act like a normal kid. And that was pretty interesting. And that was why Sai was going Shizuka hunting on this very same day. Of course he hadn't spoken to Sasuke about it, he was awfully possessive. Hell, he hadn't even told Neji that he was about to make a new play friend. Sai smiled happily at a girl who walked by. Such a nice day. If you can what? Naruto eyed the strange boy who he had seen with Sasuke the day before. God, weren't there any sane people in this school? Naruto had asked himself several times if this really was what he wanted, because he highly doubted it. The boy, who was the same height as he looked at him with the strangest smile he had ever seen. In fact, the only time he had seen a smile like that was when he sometimes looked at himself in the mirror. But a smile as fake as this was almost unbearable. Naruto almost wanted to do as the young man wished. If I can do you, or maybe not. Naruto furrowed his eyebrows, clearly irritated. What kind of idiot came up to people and asked them if they could do them? This school was just getting weirder by the second, and Naruto didn't like it. The pale dark-haired boy seemed to notice that Naruto didn't look very fond of the idea, and the smile got even worse. I want to make a picture of you. Oh, a picture? That was what this was all about. Well, that wouldn't hurt anyone, Naruto thought to himself as he let out a sigh in relief. Maybe this school wasn't so bad after all. The students only needed to get a dictionary or something or someone that would teach them to ask a question properly. Oh, well. Naruto looked at the clock that hung on the wall in the corridor. He wasn't hungry just yet, and if he did this, maybe he could get this boy to fetch him some food later on. Why not? And as Naruto began to follow the boy, he smiled himself as he saw that that horrible fake smile turned into a real one. Sai took Shizuka's hand in his and dragged the girl out into the schoolyard and over to one of the music and art buildings. Since there were less students who took those courses, they had mixed the two somewhat. And Sai didn't mind, no. He didn't care at all. All he wanted to do was to become a great artist and break free from the man, so he could make his own living someday. Having to deal with some music students wasn't that important after all. When they entered the building, the weird dude first took Naruto to an art room. There he picked up a big white canvas he could paint on, and he looked fairly surprised when Naruto easily grabbed the closest by easel, like it had been a small brush. The guy instead got to carry the light stuff, brushes, paint, a palette, and the canvas. Sai eyed the strong girl, and wondered what other kind of superpowers she hid underneath her clothes, but let it go as he opened another door. This door went to one of the music rooms, a very beautiful one. Huge windows stretched went from the ceiling down to the floor covering the room's farthest wall, and long light green curtains draped them. The floor was made of light wood, and was covered in an old but still beautiful dark green rug. In front of one of the windows, a grand piano was placed, and since it was late autumn, the leaves on the trees outside looked really good with the white and green. The wall that was not filled with windows was painted in a creamy off-white color. But of course, this was just how Sai saw it. Naruto looked boredly on the room. Sure, it looked classy, but there were not enough colors at all. But if the weird raven wanted to paint him here, Naruto wouldn't refuse. I guess you want me at the piano, Naruto said and went to sit down. He had never seen a real grand piano. In one of the places he had lived in when he was little, there was a man who had had a piano, but that had only been an ordinary one. When the man had been in one of his good moods, he had taught Naruto the only song Naruto could play on any instrument. 
he could play Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star, with one finger. You can sit astride the piano bench and face me, Sai mumbled. And after the girl had looked a little more closely at the grand piano, she did as he told her. Now when the sun stood near its highest peak in the beautiful sky, the light in the room couldn't have been more perfect. Shizuka, in her yellow and orange glory, wonderfully matched the leaves outside. And suddenly Sai realized that he had never in his life seen such blue eyes before. Eyes that seemed to hide a lot of pain, love, and a lot of secrets. Even though Sai was a rookie artist, he could still understand that this girl, this Shizuka, had seen much with those eyes and knew what life contained. Death. Then suddenly she smiled goofily and put one finger in her ear and scratched herself there, making Sai drop his head in defeat. Sasuke was right. She sure was something eccentric. Putting the brush into the medium and then the paint, Sai laid the first stroke of his painting. Sasuke tapped his fingers on the desk where he sat, both irritated and frustrated. He still couldn't get the kiss out of his head, and he could certainly not believe that he had dared to kiss Shizuka like that, outside, for everyone to see. But not a soul had said anything about it so far, so he guessed he was safe, at least for now. But if someone saw the great Uchiha Sasuke kiss a girl underneath a tree, the rumors would spread quicker than that dog Lassie could run for help. And that was damn fast. And to believe that Shizuka would think better of him than before was something he couldn't bring himself to do. This class wouldn't end all that soon either and he really wanted to talk to the blonde moron. Now they really had to talk. Because she wouldn't run away from him now, or would she? He didn't know her that well, but she was nothing if not unpredictable. Sasuke would never be able to foresee what she was going to do next. Business. Damn it was boring. He looked out of the window. There were a lot of students out, walking to her from their classes. He didn't see anyone he knew all that well. That was, until he saw Sai hurrying across the yard with a blonde girl in tow. Shizuka. Sasuke's head jerked up. Why the hell was Sai holding Shizuka's hand? And where the hell was he taking her? Sasuke followed them with his eyes and saw them disappear into an art and music building. What were they up to? Sasuke felt his blood begin to boil as he looked at the door when it closed after them. The Uchiha quickly turned his head to his laptop, looking at the clock. Great, two hours left. But when those were over, Sai and Shizuka would have to expect a visit. You ate the frog. Naruto laughed and shook his head. Haha, no. I put it in my mouth until they went away. And after that they started calling me the frog eater. Naruto and the raven begun to laugh at Naruto's memory. Sai dropped his brush as he kneeled down on the floor, holding his stomach. God, he hadn't laughed this hard since Neji had sniffed one time when he was sick, making both Sai and Sasuke take care of him. He had had all his hair in his face, and when Neji had sniffed, a long piece of his hair had been drafted into his nose. Naruto laughed, trying to catch his breath between his laughs. They had really had fun together, and Naruto couldn't understand why such a funny and relaxed person wanted to hang out with Sasuke. Though, this guy seemed to hide more than it was good for him, and Naruto guessed he had a really serious side too. And the truth was, Naruto also liked to be with Sasuke when the raven was relaxed, like when they had had detention together. So maybe opposites attracted each other, after all. Naruto stopped laughing at the thought. He had to stop thinking about Sasuke like that. He had to force himself to think that Sasuke was a bastard, that he was a creep and that he was out to murder Naruto. Naruto would have to start thinking of Sasuke as someone he only worked with, because then he wouldn't get too close to the beautiful boy. And if he kept his distance, Sasuke would hopefully lose interest in Naruto and let him be. Sai noticed that Shizuka suddenly stopped laughing, and picked up the brush again and continued with the painting. He didn't have that much left now, and there was no doubt that this had to be one of the best pieces he had ever done. All thanks to Shizuka. She was funny, and at the same time she was serious. Sai had never met anyone like her, and he understood why Sasuke liked her as much as he did. She was special, and she made you feel good too. Sai wondered how his life would have been if he had met her earlier. Would she have taken pity on him and taken care of him? Would he have come to live together with her and her family? Sai definitely believed that Shizuka was the kind of girl who took care of people whether they liked it or not. Choosing a smaller brush, he begun to work on her face. He would definitely approve her to be Sasuke's girlfriend. Suddenly the door banged open behind them, and Sai turned around and hid the painting behind his back. He didn't want anyone to see it yet, and certainly not the person who stood in the doorway. Sasuke's bangs fell over his eyes as he glared from Shizuka to Sai. What on earth were they doing? Shizuka sat at the white grand piano, and Sai was hiding a painting behind his back. What are you doing? Sai, he asked as calmly as he could, looking into Sai's eyes as if he could see what on earth he thought he was doing. Instead, it was Shizuka who answered his question. I really don't see that's any of your business, Uchiha, she said as calmly as he had. 
Oh, so we are going through that again. Sasuke snarled. Sai looked between the both of them and wondered what on earth had happened between them during such a short time. The glares that went between them was not something he would want to interfere in. Instead, he smiled and continued to hide the painting. Naruto looked at Sasuke and suddenly remembered the kiss. Sasuke seemed to do the same, as he too let his gaze fall down to look at the floor, covering his blush. Damn it, he though. Uchiha's are not meant to blush. We have to talk, Shizuka, Sasuke mumbled. He really did want to talk to her. Hell, he even wanted to ask her out. Soon the Christmas ball would take place, and Sasuke was still Sasuke. But despite that fact, he wanted it to be him, and not some random guy, to take her. But he highly doubted that she would want him to, even though he still didn't know why she started to avoid him in the first place. Well, Naruto said, feeling like an old lady as he fixed his skirt as he still straddled the piano bench, that we can do later. Now Sai, right. Sai is going to finish his wonderful painting of beautiful me, and you can take your ass away from here. If you're not planning to steal another kiss from me, because then I will kick you out of this room before you have the time to take one step closer. He finished the whole speech with pointing at the door, and Sasuke narrowed his eyes and glared at him. God dear lord, couldn't his heart stop beating so fast? Sasuke gave Shizuka one last glare before he looked back at Sai. You come to my room later. It was not a question, it was a statement. Sai nodded silently, and Sasuke walked defeated out of the door with his tail between his legs. Closing the door behind himself, he leaned against it and let his head pound into it. How could she have such a great impact on him? He gave the door a murderous look before he left the building. He wanted to strangle her at the same time as he wanted to hug her. He wanted to bite off that head of hers at the same time as he wanted to kiss all her hurtful memories away. He didn't know what to think, but Sasuke was afraid that he was beginning to fall in love. Sasuke fixed his hair before he went to the library. He wanted to escape a little, and that he always did best when he had something to read. When he read, it was almost like he was absorbed into the book and its story, and he could forget everything else. That was the way he had escaped the memories of the sight of his parents' corpses lying on the floor of their house that had once been a home. Reading made his heart beat slower, it made his headache go away. It made him sleep better, and sleep was something he would welcome with open arms when darkness fell. The rest of the day he sat in the library, reading book after book. He didn't care to eat or take a break, drink something or close his eyes even for a second. If he did he would only think about Shizuka, and he didn't want to do that, because he didn't know where his thoughts would take him. Turning page after page, reading chapter after chapter, the world outside the building turned dark. The librarian would soon come to make him go away, but he wouldn't leave before she did that. And when she finally came, he rented a whole pile of books. She asked him, as she wrinkled her nose between every word she said, if he didn't have any homework. But he only glared at her, and after that she didn't say anything else. Grabbing a plastic bag that normally would have cost him money when she didn't look, he left for the billionaire's dorm. It was darker outside than he had thought, and he felt his eyelids becoming heavier for each second that passed. Fiddling with his key and sticking it into the hole, he yanked at the door, only to realize that he had just locked it. Sasuke's forehead wrinkled as he frowned. He was sure that he had locked the door when he had left this morning. He never forgot, so why would he now? Slowly sticking the key into the keyhole again and unlocking the door, he pushed it open with his foot, afraid that someone would jump him if he took one step closer. But then he saw that there probably wouldn't be anyone out to attack him. Sasuke didn't know how Sai had got a hold on his key, or even was able to open the door. Most likely he had gotten in the same way Shizuka had, and Sasuke couldn't remember if he had closed the window or not. He would have to make that a habit, to close and lock the window, that is. However, in the middle of the room, an easel stood, with a painting placed upon it. Shizuka's blue eyes met his, her blonde hair glowing in the sun from the windows. And Sasuke knew, that this was the best work he had even seen from Sai, and probably the best he would ever make. It sure was beautiful. Stepping into the room, and closing the door behind him, Sasuke didn't hear his name being moaned three doors away for the second time that day. Sasuke couldn't believe his eyes. Dark orbs widened at the sight put in front of him. This was not possible. How? Why? And all the time he, why on earth was Sai hanging out with a bunch of geeks? The dark-haired 17-year-old Uchiha was currently peeping at the group of people from behind a tree. The first snow covered the ground making the world look white and inviting. The students had been forced to bring out their winter coats now that the weather had turned cold. The birds had long since flown south, but Sasuke wasn't jealous of them. He liked the cold. He could be outside during the winter without getting a nasty sunburn. And he could watch Shizuka playing in the snow together with her friends. Today, Shizuka wasn't wearing her orange coat that matched the school uniform. 
Around her neck she was only wearing the brown scarf that came with the coat and she wasn't even wearing the normal jacket. No, Shizuka was bouncing around in the snow together with a brown-haired short boy in only her short skirt, boots, white shirt and the scarf. Sasuke crawled deeper into his embrace as he tried to keep warm in his blue coat. Yes, he liked the cold, but only when he was able to keep warm from it. His black scarf was twirled around his neck and chin, and he buried his face in the soft material. Where he stood behind the leafless tree, he could see Shizuka and the other play, being watched by two other guys, that Gara bloke and Sai. Why the hell was Sai there? Those were geeks, and only Shizuka was actually a billionaire. And of course, Gara, but Sasuke didn't really count Gara as a person. Sasuke had to admit though, that Sai actually looked like he was happy. And, okay, he might as well admit it, he was kind of happy that Sai was having fun. He and Neji weren't the liveliest people to hang out with. Suddenly he felt a hand being clasped on his shoulder, and he looked briefly behind him to see who it was. Seeing pale eyes is the only thing that actually told him that there was a person underneath the cap, scarf and coat. Sasuke turned back to the scene on the other end of the yard. What do you want? Sasuke asked boredly. He knew what Neji had on his mind, but he didn't want to deal with that right now. Just seeing how it's going, Neji's muffled answer came from the scarf, and he sniffled. Damn, Neji became sick too easily, and Sasuke damn hoped that he wouldn't catch whatever Neji had. To answer Neji Sasuke only shrugged his shoulders, looking at Shizuka when she threw a snowball in the fatso's face. The snow fell down in the boy's bag of chips, and only seconds later the chubby boy was in the middle of the snow fight. I assume you haven't asked her yet. Oh yeah, Neji just had to rub it in. It was almost as if he enjoyed it. Sasuke gave Neji a suspicious look. Stupid Hiwuga. Okay, so what if Neji was right? It wasn't like he had asked Shizuka if she wanted to go with him to the Christmas ball. Every day Sasuke admired the girls who came and asked him, having built up their courage like that. Of course Sasuke refused to go with any of them. But he couldn't believe how brave some of them got. Some of them didn't even look at him when they asked, but still it was better than Sasuke would ever manage. He damned his pride. If he wasn't such a coward, he could go up now and ask her. She would brush the snow out of her bangs, look at him with a surprised smile and say yes, because she would never say no to Uchiha Sasuke. But the thing was, Sasuke felt cold shivers down his back when he thought about it. To ask someone a question like that, in front of the whole school, frightened him more than he was frightened by his own brother. And that was pretty serious. Fighting with someone in public was one thing. Showing affection in public was something else. He ignored the shuffling feet behind his back as Neji turned more than cold from the weather. Sasuke looked at Shizuka when she put a foot on the chubby man's back as he laid over the smaller one, defeated by the blonde girl. Shizuka laughed with her hands in her sides, and then she dropped down and begun to stuff snow inside their coats. Sasuke smirked as the screams more than well reached them. Otherwise, Sasuke had everything ready. He had a suit. He had a present to give Shizuka. He knew how he would comb his hair. He had practiced what he would say to her. He had tried to smile at himself in the mirror. He was ready. Although he didn't exactly have the date he wanted to have. And he didn't have the courage. Not that she made it easy for him, quite the opposite actually. She was still ignoring him, and she still seemed to be mad at him. Sasuke assumed that she still hadn't let go of the kiss he had given her. He sure hadn't, but that was for a whole different reason from Shizuka. The thing with Shizuka was that he couldn't get her out of his mind and heart. He thought about her almost every waking hour, and when he sat in his room at night, he almost couldn't tear his eyes away from the painting Sai had done for him. Sasuke didn't think it was fair for someone to just barge in like Shizuka had and take his heart, and she called him a thief. At least she didn't feel anything for him. Which was one thing she had made clear, except that she had responded to the kiss, and that surely had to mean something, right? I hope to God it does. It isn't that hard you know. The shorter of the two gave the speaker another glare. God, he hated Neji right now. Just because Neji would go with the girl with buns on her head, didn't mean that he was better than Sasuke. Hell, Sai had even told him that it was the girl that had asked Neji out. Of course Neji had asked Sai to not say anything about that to Sasuke, but since when did Sai care about such things? Especially things that would entertain him if they came out. Briefly he wondered if he had said something to Shizuka about him. Sasuke had to ask Sai about that later. The world is not going to end if she says no, you know. The next thing Neji knew, he was buried deep down in a pile of snow, Sasuke angrily stomping away. Sasuke sure needs to take some anger management classes, Neji thought bitterly, sneezing the snow out of his nose. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, what if he was falling in love with Sasuke? It still didn't mean that he would try to get together with him. That would be stupid, idiotic, stupid again and just wrong. 
because he hadn't really told Sasuke that he was a man and had been born with a penis. And it wasn't like Sasuke liked him that way anyway. The kiss he had given Naruto just had to be some kind of joke. Because there was no way in hell that Sasuke had been serious. That didn't make Naruto any less in love with the Uchiha though. Oh, wait. He wasn't in love with him just yet. He hadn't quite hit the ground in his fall just yet, so it didn't really count. And he could just as well change course and keep flying as far as he knew. This could easily be some small crush that would soon go away rather than something serious. And Naruto didn't want to risk anything before he was sure. One thing he didn't know though, was what he was going to do if he actually came to love the Uchiha in that kind of way. He didn't know if he would just walk away, leaving Sasuke at the end of the year, or if he would he listen to his heart and do what it told him to. He had never been in love, so he had no idea how his heart would react. Would he be able to leave when the time came? Or would he pour his heart out? Bang, bang, bang. The best would be if he just stayed out of Sasuke's way, not being in contact at all. Then he hopefully would keep flying, and Sasuke would give up. Then all his problems would be solved, right? Naruto hung his head down as the gun in his hand shot shocks through his upper body. To hell with it. He was currently standing in the shooting hall in a building near the sports grounds. Some students actually competed in shooting, but Naruto only did it because he really had to. The first time he had held a gun in his hands, he had been seven years old. He had found it in one of Asuma's drawers, in his home office. Asuma often continued to work even after he had gone home in the evenings, so he had installed a big desk with a police computer. The computer wasn't at his house legally, but frankly, Asuma didn't care about those things. Crimes had to be solved, and a borrowed computer wasn't that much of an affair. Little Naruto, who had still been living with Asuma at that time, had of course found the gun. There wasn't a place in Asuma's house that hadn't been investigated by the little mini-cop Naruto. Of course Naruto had seen guns before. He had been at many crime scenes, both where people had drawn their pistols and where they just had been hung in the police officer's belts. But this was the first time he had actually got a hold on one. Naruto had picked it up, making a cry of surprise when he felt how heavy it was. With two shaky hands he had done what he had seen the policemen do, pulled the safety and pulled the trigger. The shot had gone off just as Asuma came back to the house after his food shopping. The older man had run across the house, only to find Naruto with his gun. The cop had snatched the gun out of Naruto's hands, and then he had rested one heavy-handed slap across Naruto's whiskered cheek. That had been the only time Asuma had ever laid a hand on him, and Naruto understood why he did it. He had never seen Asuma that scared in his whole life, and sometimes when the shabby man looked at him with worry in his eyes, Naruto often recalled that moment. When Asuma looked at him like that, Naruto couldn't blame the man for what had happened after Asuma couldn't take care of him any longer. After that incident, Asuma had taught Naruto how to use a gun. Naruto had been more than underage, but Asuma had been scared that something would happen to the boy. Now he could draw and shoot better than any of the police officers he worked with. And when other officers came from the outside, not many of them could be compared to him. He had had more time to train than any of them, both officially and unofficially. Bang, 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 bang. Naruto suddenly came back from his memories only to realize that he had had his eyes closed the whole time. Not that it matters, he thought and looked at the holes positioned perfectly in the paper doll. Sighing he took off the earmuffs and pulled off his required school safety vest and walked out of the basement, up the seemingly endless stairs to the ground floor. The basement was built a far ways underneath the rest of the school, to avoid having the shooting break the concentration of the other students who didn't use the facility. The whole cellar was soundproof, so Naruto didn't really understand why they even bothered. Rich bastards, smiling a goodbye on his way out at the shooting instructor who had taken a spare moment to stand in the snow and smoke. Naruto welcomed the cold air into his lungs. Normally he would have medicine this period, but he couldn't bother about such things right now. Asuma always told him that he shouldn't do things if he couldn't concentrate, and even if Asuma hadn't had skipping in his mind, Naruto just did what he was told. He swore when some snow made its way into his boots, feeling the icy cold water running down his ankles. Naruto liked to play in the snow, but walking was just too troublesome. This reminded him of Shikamaru and his other friends. Kiba hadn't even mentioned anything when Sai had come up to them today when he and Kiba had been wrestling in the snow. It was just like they had accepted that Naruto had brought another stray dog with him. If you could call Sai stray, but he was weird anyways. Naruto was still smiling when he heard someone clear their throat behind him 
just as another clump of snow fell into his shoes. Do. Do you want to go to the ball with me? Shizuka. Sai poked Sasuke's motionless head with a twig he had found in the snow earlier. Sasuke only grunted in reply, making both Neji and Sai understand that this was now beyond serious. Maybe they would have to take Sasuke to a doctor. A normal doctor. Taking Sasuke to Tsunade with love problems would be suicide. For all three of the raven-haired boys. The young man with the stick cocked his head in displease. He wouldn't get Sasuke to ask Shizuka to the ball this way. Neji and he had been trying to get Sasuke out of his room for almost the whole day, ever since Sasuke had crawled back to it, underneath a now warm and comfortable blanket. Now he lay in the bed like a larva in its cocoon. Sai had gone so far that he had poked the stick in Sasuke's ass, only to get a grunt, or something that sound like the everlasting HN Sasuke sometimes started with. Neji only sneezed in his corner, sighed and walked up to Sasuke's wardrobe. He opened it and picked out the suit Sasuke would wear to the Christmas event. Neji gave Sai a playful look, something Sai didn't see often and the long-haired boy winked at him. Didn't you tell me, Sai, that you heard that there were a lot of people? He said, smirking as he knew that Sasuke couldn't see him from where he was hidden, who were going to ask our beautiful Shizuka out. They could almost see the blanket become tense, and Sai smirked back at Neji. Yeah, that's true Neji. I wonder who will be the first to ask. I'm sure she'll pick him. Neji and Sai's breath suddenly caught in their throats. Their bangs waved in the wind. Sasuke stood in the middle of the room, the force of the quick movement still lingering around him. His head was bent down, black hair covering his eyes. An alarming smirk was placed on his lips. And without further tries, Sasuke was out of the door before anyone would have the time to say dear God. I know you're angry with me for the kiss I stole, but I wanted to ask if you wanted to go to the ball with me. Sasuke stood in the doorway of Shizuka's room, glancing sideways. Both his hands folded together behind his back, and he could almost feel the blush making its way up his neck, ready to attack his cheeks. And Shizuka only stared at him. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes or ears. Why did Sasuke ask him to the ball? He hadn't thought that anyone would ask him at all, and now the Uchiha Sasuke did, of all people. Did this mean that Sasuke was actually trying his best to get closer to Naruto, or was this a joke? But Naruto didn't believe so, no. Even if Sasuke acted like a bastard, he didn't think he would do this sort of thing. Naruto closed his eyes. Go away. He wanted to scream. Leave my heart alone. I already said yes to someone else, Naruto whispered, his eyes still closed. He cursed his heart for the aching need to say yes to Sasuke. Sasuke tensed up, his eyes narrowing. Naruto almost thought that he would leave without a word when he finally spoke up. Who? Sasuke knew his voice didn't hold any emotions, not giving away anything that would tell Shizuka what kind of raging feelings he had boiling inside him. Chaoji. Naruto understood by the look on Sasuke's face that he had no clue who Chaoji was. The guy that always carries a bag of chips. Suddenly Sasuke's mouth hung open enough for Naruto to guess what he ate for breakfast. That fatso. He's not fat. He is. Chubby. Naruto defended his friend. Sasuke closed his mouth and turned to walk away. He stopped however when a big tan hand clasped around his wrist. He turned back to Shizuka who looked into his eyes with her own beautiful ocean blue. It's not like that, Sasuke. He just didn't have anyone to go with. And since he though it would be embarrassing to go alone he asked me. But there were no feelings involved, we're only going for the food and what I mean is. Naruto knew he was rambling and quickly shut his mouth. Looking into Sasuke's eyes, he was met with the same indifference that had washed over the black orbs only seconds ago. Sasuke pulled his hand out of Shizuka's hold. I don't see the point of explaining such things to me. Naruto withdrew. It was true. He had no reason for explaining that to Sasuke. So why was he? Before he could think further, Sasuke was gone. Naruto closed the door and slid down it, leaning against it as he sat on the floor with his elbows resting on his knees and his hands buried in his long, blonde hair. Why wouldn't his heart stop racing? Why did Sasuke make it so hard for him? Why had he felt so bad when he had to say no to Sasuke? Damn it he thought as he fisted the hair between his fingers. Why had it hurt so much to break Sasuke's heart like that? Naruto groaned and laid himself down on the floor. He had hit the hard ground at last. Yuzumaki Naruto was now officially in love with Uchiha Sasuke. In the chilly room, Naruto sat in his dress and waited. His hands were folded, resting in his lap. His shoulders were stiff and he wished for a good massage. Outside the world had turned fully into winter now. Christmas was only one week away. It would be a white day this year too. The old windows that had been good to sneak into your enemy's room didn't withstand the winter's cold that much. All Naruto wanted to do right now was to crawl deep underneath the blanket and sleep the evening away. He didn't really feel like going to the ball, 
but he had said yes to Chaoji, and Naruto wasn't a man who went back on his words. No, he had to go to the ball with Chaoji, and hopefully he would have a good time. Naruto wondered if Sasuke would be there. He smoothed down the red dress, his hands following the silky fabric. A few days ago, a letter and a big box had waited for Naruto when he woke up. The box had been left inside his room, so he had guessed the sender had to be Tsunade, who was the only one with access to the skeleton key. The letter looked exactly like the one he had received when he first arrived at the school, so he had no doubt it had come from Asuma. Naruto had found himself smiling. He hadn't heard from Asuma since that night the man had come to visit him. It was good to see that the old man still was alive. Naruto had made his way out of his bed toward the new things in his room. Wrapped up in the cozy blanket he had wormed his way over the floor, a hand shakily reaching out for the letter. His fingers had trembled as he opened it up. Shizuka, the letter had said, new information has come to my knowledge. Can't tell like this. Can't visit. Your school will soon have a trip to the city. Meet me at the station. Hey, new knowledge, huh? Naruto assumed it had to be about who or what exactly was after him, and what they were going to do about it. After he had read it, Naruto ripped the letter into pieces and flushed it down the toilet, like he had done with the other one. If someone were to come into his room, letters like those would only cause trouble, like the gun had. The gun was now hidden underneath his mattress, an original place to hide it, but he felt it was safe enough from unwanted eyes. When Naruto was finished with destroying the letter he went back to the highly interesting box. He had dropped to his knees in front of it, eyeing it suspiciously. It had been a black box, like the one his school uniform had laid in. He had wondered what Tsunade had sent him. Pulling off the lid and taking away the silk paper, Naruto had found himself looking at a dark red silky fabric. Forgetting the blanket he stood up with the garment in his hands. It was a dress, a blood-red dress that went all the way to the floor. It had long sleeves, and at the end of both the sleeves and the dress, a small golden line was placed around. The neckline wasn't cut low, but went from shoulder peak to shoulder peak and would show enough skin. Underneath the dress in the box a pair of golden shoes with a small heel had laid, together with a small card. Miss Nanohara, Shizuka, by listening to the gossip around the school, I have come to know that you are to attend to the Christmas ball together with Mr. Akimichi Chaoji. As I thought about it, I realized that you didn't own a dress. This is for you. Use it. Principal Tsunade. Naruto had snickered at the letter. Use it. Was that a proposal or a command? But even now, Naruto couldn't help but smile when he remembered the letter. He really appreciated that Tsunade had even taken the time to think of him, let alone to give him a dress as beautiful as this one. He had thought about asking Temeri, but this would definitely be better. The dress fit him perfectly and was just the right length. Naruto wondered where the principal had got a hold of something as beautiful as this, but decided not to question it. The dress wasn't what kept his mind restless however. Sasuke caused that. Thinking of Sasuke made Naruto's headache, and all he wanted was to fulfill the urge he had had earlier, to crawl deep underneath the blanket and hide there until the school year was over. He wanted to forget about Sasuke, but that seemed to be impossible. Somehow, the Uchiha had made his way into Naruto's heart, and he doubted that would leave anytime soon. Not from Naruto's point of view that is. So what if Naruto had fallen in love with Sasuke? That wouldn't change anything. He could never get too close to the raven, ever. He simply had and was going to have too many secrets, and he would never be able to share them, or would he? Naruto ignored his heart's pleading. He could never tell Sasuke the truth. What would he think of Naruto if he did? If Naruto told him his secret, he would definitely lose Sasuke. If you could lose something you couldn't have. There was an idea though. If he told Sasuke the truth, Sasuke would definitely leave Naruto's ass alone. Then that problem would be solved. But Naruto knew that was out of question. He could not risk something that important only to get Sasuke to leave him alone. Suma had gone through a lot of trouble to get Naruto into this high-class school, and Naruto wasn't going to be the one to spoil it. Sasuke was something else. When Naruto had said yes to Chaoji, one of the reasons had been that he didn't think anyone else would ask him. Of course he wanted to go with Chaoji. They had said directly that they would go together because they didn't have any other dates. Shikamaru would go with Temeri, Kiba with Hinata and Gara. Being Gara, Gara wouldn't go at all. They would go for the food and because they were friends. But why had he wanted to explain that to Sasuke? He had no reason. He had had no reason to stop Sasuke from walking away. So why had he done it? Naruto hung his head, blue eyes eyeing the red dress against the white blanket. He had listened to his heart. He had fallen in love with Sasuke, and he didn't want to let him go. If he kept on like this, he would not be able to leave Sasuke at the end of the year. If he kept on like this, he would pour his heart out to the boy. Love and secret confessions mixed together in an awful combination. 
and he had to prevent himself from doing that at all costs. The blonde boy alone on his bed closed his eyes. He was tired, so fucking tired. He was stressed and was under a lot of pressure. All he wanted to do was to sleep. A soft knocking was heard from the door, but he couldn't do that. Now, he had to stand up, but on his mask, smile, and follow Chowji to the Christmas ball. And if he couldn't feel happy at all this evening, he would be damned if he didn't smile as though he was. The room that held the great Christmas ball was decorated as you would think a room where a Christmas ball would be held should be. A towering Christmas tree was placed in the middle of the enormous room, which could hold the entire student population, plus family and friends. The walls were white and sparkled liberally with gold ornaments, and the floor was as red as his dress. There was a stage between twin staircases that went up to the second floor balconies on the far side of the room. The band on it was playing. Naruto didn't know who they were. He guessed though, that they had to be somewhat famous, to be playing in a school like this one. A long table went from one side to the other, covered in fancy foods of all sorts. Throughout the massive room students were showing off their lavish dresses and expensive suits, laughing and having a good time. Some of them were dancing nearer to the stage. There were open doors along the walls that led off into side rooms, through which Naruto could see fancy couches, billiards, dart, and other games you could entertain yourself with. One room contained a bar for those lucky few over 18. But Naruto could only make out a few teachers in that room so far. Chaoji quickly spotted their friends, and they made their way through the clusters of revelers. Kiba and Hinata were one of the couples who were dancing, and Naruto smiled at Shikamaru and Temuri where they stood each with a glass of the fruity punch in their hands. Shizuka, what a wonderful dress, Temuri said and smiled at him. Naruto smiled back at her and thanked her, telling her that her dress was also beautiful, even though he didn't even look at it. The other three began to talk to each other, but Naruto soon lost the thread. His mind was heavy and so were his eyelids. To prevent himself from falling asleep where he stood, Naruto let his gaze wander the giant room once more. He saw Kiba and Hinata waving at him, but he didn't care for waving back. The band was playing some fast song, and Naruto was sure his head would explode any minute. The room danced in too many colors and Naruto closed his eyes briefly. When he opened them seconds later, he saw the one person he didn't want to see there. Uchiha Sasuke. The band slowed down their tempo and so did all the couples who danced. Naruto watched as Sasuke was led to the dance floor by Sakura. In a sparkling pink dress with white gloves, she placed his hands on her hips. He had a frown on his face, and he tried to break loose from her. Then Sasuke suddenly tensed, as if knowing someone was watching him. Slowly his head rose, looking directly at Naruto. Sasuke's grip on Sakura's waist tightened. Their eyes met. Sasuke suddenly felt sick. Shizuka stood on the other side of the room, watching him and Sakura dance. She was dressed in a beautiful red dress that went deliciously well with her bronze skin and golden hair. Sasuke had never seen anything more perfect. Her blue eyes seemed to shine even brighter than before. She was beautiful, more beautiful than any girl or boy at the ball. And Sasuke felt sick about it. Sick, as he had felt ever since the day she had turned him down. Sick that even though he hated her as much as he did right now, he felt terrible for making her look at him with that face, when he pulled the girl's pink head closer to his shoulder. Even though Sasuke had spent the days since then hiding from her in his room and trying to maintain his anger, he still felt something for her. He knew he, okay, to hell with this shit. He fancied her, okay. He thought she was beautiful, he enjoyed being with her, he liked to fight with her, he liked to argue with her, he liked to kiss her, and he was sure he would like it even more if she kissed him. For the moment he had to believe that she had responded, he was sure of it. He really was. He didn't want to dance with this girl. He didn't even know her goddamn name. She had asked him to the dance. Somewhere around the tenth time, she had been lucky. She had asked him only minutes after he had been turned down by Shizuka, and she had taken Sasuke's grunted reply as a yes. Sasuke didn't really care. For the moment he was only dancing with her because Shizuka was looking. Sasuke looked down at her pink head. He wanted to vomit at the color, because that would at least make it less disgusting. He lifted his head to look at Shizuka again. His stomach turned as he saw her bite her bottom lip and turn away. She must have been trying to hide a triumph smirk, because she did want to turn him down. Right, right, two pair of eyes met over the punch bowl. Blue eyes meeting black ones at the same time as a tan hand grasped a pale one over the same ladle. Burning, Naruto withdrew his hand as quickly as he could and he saw Sasuke do the same. They stood on either side of the table, both with one of those classy glasses in their hands. Naruto in his dress and Sasuke in his suit, both eyes narrowing, both hands grabbing the ladle again. I was here first. Sasuke hissed. The hell you were. Naruto snarled back. 
Give dot 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 it dot dot dot. Never. They continued to struggle over the ladle, sending people who were on their way to get some punch quickly in a different direction. Naruto growled and looked up at Sasuke through the blonde bangs that hung over his eyes, when he suddenly caught someone looking rather sternly at them. It was the same teacher who had given them detention before, Professor Yumino or something. Naruto swallowed and looked back at Sasuke. Fine, he said and let go. The sudden lack of tension caused Sasuke to jerk the ladle. Bright red punch splashed over the both of them, drenching their beautiful clothes. Naruto gasped and placed his hands on his chest in shock. Sasuke, look what you did. He looked up at Sasuke, who in his turn looked strangely at Naruto's chest. Naruto realized where his hands were resting and let them fall to his sides instead. Sasuke looked up at him again. It's your fault, you idiot. Sasuke said, offended. He wasn't the one who let go of the ladle. Now both their clothes were ruined, and everything was Shizuka's fault. Everything that had gone wrong this year had been Shizuka's fault for Christ's sake. Well, if you had been a gentleman, you would have given me the ladle, Naruto said, irritated with both Sasuke and his dress. Sasuke's eyes squinted even more, if that even was possible. If you had been like a lady from the beginning, we wouldn't even be here. Both teenagers went silent, looking at each other. Naruto didn't believe he had ever been this irritated in his whole life. He closed his eyes and took three shaky breaths before he opened them up again. He had to get away from here. He couldn't be here any longer, ignoring the way his heart was hammering in his chest. Naruto was almost certain that Sasuke could hear the loudness of the pounding through the layers of skin, fake breasts, bra, and ruined dress. Naruto straightened his back and saw Chaoji, Shikamaru and Temuri looking in their direction. He had to get away from here. Take your punch, he said, I'm outta here. He began to walk away when he suddenly heard Sasuke speak quietly to himself. Never again, right? Naruto stopped in his movements. Never again. Never again what? He quickly turned around and saw Sasuke heading through the big crowds, heading for the door. Naruto threw a look at his friends and smiled an excuse to them, before he headed after Sasuke, out in the pitch black of the evening. Never in his life had Sasuke been as furious as he was right now. His blood boiled in his veins, the frigid cold of the late winter evening just a small feeling in the back of his head. He had forgotten his coat in the cloakroom back at the ball, but there was no way in hell that he was going back there right now. There was no was in hell he was going back to where Shizuka was. This was the second time in all his 17 years that he had done this. The second fucking time he had let anyone come this close to his heart. The first time had been his family, Itachi of course. He had let them close to his heart and what had he gotten in return? Nothing. Not a single fucking thing. They had left him. After that he had hardened his heart. Wouldn't you? If everyone you loved suddenly left you. Wouldn't you shut the door and lock it and throw the key as far as a human soul can throw, if not even farther? Wouldn't you take a big step away from mankind, only looking passively at them as they love, hate, cry and laugh? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't anyone? Sasuke did. And for the first time since he was 13, he had let someone come close. And look where that had taken him. Walking alone in the freezing night, feeling frustrated and abandoned. Never again. Never again he would open up his heart to anyone. He had been burned too too many times, and enough was enough. Sasuke kept walking, heading for his dorm. He wanted to get into his room and sleep the rest of the year by. He didn't want to see her face again. He didn't know what he would think if he did. What would he do? Would he hit her right between her eyes? He wanted to. Would he? Cry. Oh God. Sasuke decided to leave it there. Out of the night, the sound of a car driving quietly in the snow could be heard. Sasuke stopped in the high snow. Who would come to the school at a time like this? Maybe someone for the ball. Probably someone for the ball. But wouldn't they have been here earlier if that was the case? Sasuke suddenly realized how cold the world was around him, and he quickly folded his arms over his chest. Great. Now he really had to hurry to his room. Wait you fucking bastard. Sasuke's eyes widened as he turned around. Shizuka was approaching him quickly, her bare hands holding up the red dress as she jogged through the high snow heaps. Her cheeks were red and her hair was dancing behind her, and even if he hated himself for it, Sasuke's heart began to beat faster as she came closer. He quickly turned away and started to walk through the snow with big steps, faster than before, his hands still folded over his chest. Got him it. Fucking wait you son of a bitch. Shizuka screamed after him. Sasuke quickened his steps. Shizuka did the same. Sasuke began to run. Shizuka wasn't late after. The chase was on and soon both of them were running as fast as they could in the snow. Both of them forgetting how freaking cold it was. Hell, they didn't even know where they were running, but they sure ran past their dorm. 
Don't think you can get away. Stop following me, you idiot. Sasuke screamed back, almost out of breath. Never in my life. Right? Sasuke cursed as he stumbled over a stone hidden beneath the thick snow blanket. He threw an eye backwards only to see that Shizuka was closer than she had been just a second ago. Where the hell did she get her energy from? Then, out of nowhere, a low surprised scream was heard, making Sasuke stop dead in the middle of a big step. He twirled around and saw nothing. And that was the problem. Where the hell did Shizuka go? He took five steps back and saw something dark in the snow. Shizuka had tripped on the stone Sasuke had stumbled over earlier. Now she was lying with her face deep buried in the snow, not a sound coming from her. Sasuke took an uncertain step closer. Shizuka, he asked to the lifeless form. Are, are you all right? Nothing happened. Sasuke took another step closer. Shizuka, okay, now he was worried. He took the five last steps and fell down next to her, grabbing her shoulders in an attempt to rouse her. She was as stiff as the rock she had tripped over. Shizuka, come on, Shizuka. Sasuke felt the panic rising. What had he done? He was the one who had made Shizuka run after him. Why hadn't he stopped to see what she wanted when he saw that she hadn't enough clothes on? A low chuckle was heard. She, Sasuke was cut off in the middle of her name when Shizuka suddenly threw herself over him. Sasuke growled and begun to struggle and a pretty serious snow fight had begun. Sasuke screamed when Shizuka stuffed snow inside his suit. He made a snowball which he pressed against her bosom. Shizuka screamed and hit Sasuke in his head. Hard. Fuck. Sasuke exhaled, and in a second Naruto straddled him where they laid on the ground. He looked up to see a widely grinning blonde girl. He tried to throw her off, but hell she was strong. Then she suddenly became serious, looking at Sasuke with a frown. What did you mean by never again Sasuke? Sasuke looked at him and looked away. Damn, Naruto had gone through too much trouble now to let Sasuke stop. And not letting you go you know. You'll begin to freeze soon, Sasuke said with that dead tone of his. And he was right. Naruto was fucking freezing to death, but he wouldn't let Sasuke know that. I'm warm-blooded. I can stay here all the night if I have to. Naruto smiled in triumph when Sasuke looked rather panicked, but it was soon replaced with a smirk. Be my guest, he said lowly. Naruto smirked back and leaned closer, almost making the tip of their noses touch. He could feel Sasuke's breath hitch, the warm puffs of air more than welcomed on his face. Maybe I will, he whispered. God, he was too close. If he leaned a bit closer, their lips would meet for a second wonderful time. If he only leaned closer, Sasuke's eyes widened when he saw what Shizuka was about to do. But then he closed his eyes and stretched his neck upwards to meet Shizuka halfway. Their lips had barely brushed against each other when a flash of light hit them. Naruto and Sasuke opened their eyes and looked at each other for a second, before slowly turning their heads to where the light came from. Next to them a stylish black car stood with its lights on. Naruto was stunned. How could they not have heard that? The car was fucking parked next to them. The driver's seat door was opened, and a dark figure stepped out of it, walking behind the car to reach one of the back doors. The figure opened the door, and another dark shadow stepped out. The two of them made their way up to Naruto and Sasuke, who were still laying on the ground and into the light. The first one, a man, looked weird. In the light, Naruto almost though the man looked blue for a moment. He was tall and wore a long black cloak that went all the way to his feet, an exact replica of the one the other man had on. The second man was almost the mirror image of Sasuke. The man, from where Naruto was leaned over Sasuke, looked taller than the young student, but not as tall as Naruto. He had longer hair, and the light lit the dark bags under his eyes. His eyes were as black as Sasuke's. While the similarity was striking, at the same time they looked like they came from different parts of the world. Sasuke's eyes weren't that cruel. Sasuke didn't look that dead. And even though Sasuke and this man were so different in just one look, there was no doubt who this man was. Ochoa Itachi, little brother, little girl, Itachi said, Good evening. Naruto felt Sasuke tense underneath him, but he didn't move away. Who knew what would happen if he did? Instead he stayed on Sasuke's stomach, and he placed his hands on Sasuke's shoulders as if to say, don't do anything stupid. Itachi, Sasuke growled. In some sort of way he was glad that Shizuka held him down. Otherwise he wouldn't know what he would do. Nothing pretty, that was sure. What the hell are you doing here? Itachi snickered in the silent night, his friend joining him. Just looking for someone, little brother. Not for you though. Itachi leaned closer. You're not interesting enough. Sasuke growled and tried to throw Naruto off of himself, but Naruto held him down. He didn't know what Itachi could have done to make Sasuke react like this, but he really wanted to know. Itachi snickered again before he motioned his companion to follow him. 
Itachi gave one look to Sasuke over his shoulder before heading to the ballroom on the path that had been plowed, a path neither Naruto nor Sasuke had found when they were in the middle of their chase. Sasuke screamed a low scream in agony and tried to follow, but Naruto didn't budge. When Itachi and his friend were out of sight, Naruto dared to loosen his hold. Almost immediately he was thrown off onto the snow, and Sasuke tried to get up. Naruto lunged for his feet and grabbed a hold, pulling Sasuke down on the ground again with an unpleasant thud. Let me go you fucking idiot. Sasuke growled. And what will you do then? Kill him. Naruto screamed back. Sasuke stopped in his movements, thinking. Shizuka had a point. He couldn't kill Itachi like this. He had to get a weapon. Like, a gun. Quickly he stood up. And Shizuka was about to pull him down again when she suddenly noticed that Sasuke was heading in a different direction. She quickly picked herself up too, following Sasuke as he walked away. Just like that. You're dropping it. She asked him surprised. He aimed a glare at her even as he took note of her red cheeks and her red lips, her sparkling blue eyes and, No, I'm going to kill him, he said as he quickened his step for the umpteenth time this evening. But, she started, sounding utterly confused. I'm going to shoot him. Shizuka suddenly stopped in the snow. Shoot him, Naruto thought. How will he be able to do that? He doesn't have a gun. Oh, no you don't, Naruto said and ran after Sasuke. Sasuke, who had seen this coming, had already begun to run to their dorm heading for Naruto's room. Naruto had to stop him. Damn it. Naruto was already fucking tired, and he really didn't really feel like running anymore. With one last burst of energy he ran after Sasuke at top speed, up the stairs and after Sasuke into the dark room. The only source of light in the dorm was the small lamps that hung on the walls throughout the corridor, but the chandeliers were dark. He saw Sasuke pulling harshly on his door, and when he reached the raven, he grabbed a hold of his shoulder and smashed him into the closest wall. Let me go. Hell no. You think I'm stupid. Would be news to me if you aren't. Bastard. Idiot. Ass. Dinbo. Naruto's eyes narrowed. That's cheap. Then let me go, Sasuke said, as if he had been proven a point. Naruto laughed out loud before stopping abruptly. Do you think I'm stupid? She said, sounding deadly serious with that low voice she sometimes got when emotions were flying high. Sasuke swallowed, and realized how close they stood. Too close, like earlier, when they almost had kissed for a second time. Shizuka seemed to have realized the same thing. Her lips parted and her eyelids fell halfway down her eyes. Their hearts began to speed up, not from running but from attraction. And in a way, love. Sasuke, Naruto whispered. Yes, Sasuke answered, his face inching closer. And Naruto closed the distance. Saruto by Asuma had had one hell of a night. Damn, he had had one hell of a couple of months. That was the bad thing with getting too close to someone. Naruto was someone Asuma saw as his own son. And he had been putting his soul into catching the man who was chasing after the boy. He had sent out several people to get information. But even still, it had taken too much time. But now they were finally making some progress. He had the name of the man who was after Naruto, and it wasn't good. Asuma was beginning to regret having sent Naruto on that undercover mission into the freaking mafia. The man who was chasing Naruto wanted the information the kid had gotten. He wanted to know everything about Orochimaru's area and his fortune. And Naruto was the key to all of those things. Asuma closed his eyes. He would have to talk to Naruto soon, before Uchiha Itachi caught up to him. Yes, Naruto had kissed both boys and girls in his lifetime. Some of those kisses had been good, and some of them splendid. But none of them had been as wonderful as the one he now shared with Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke's lips were really soft. The burning sensation where their lips met was sending a tingling sensation throughout his body to his fingertips and toes. He could feel Sasuke's warm breath on his face as he breathed through his nose, which occasionally bumped into Naruto's own. Naruto's own heated face was pressed so closely against Sasuke's. And of course there was the euphoria of finally being able to kiss Sasuke for real. They parted for a second, opening their eyes only to close them and kiss each other again. This kiss was more passionate than the last one, which had been more of a playful exploration of each other. Naruto stuck out his tongue and licked Sasuke's bottom lip, sucking it in before Sasuke opened his mouth to welcome him in. Naruto gladly agreed and moaned when his tongue met Sasuke's for the first but definitely not the last time. Sasuke tasted so good. His taste intoxicated Naruto, making Naruto moan with greed. He pressed Sasuke closer to the wall. Sasuke didn't mind being pressed against the wall, not at all. Shizuka's tongue deep buried in his mouth sent positive chills down his spine, and he arched his back slightly to bring himself closer. Even though they weren't pressed against each other, Sasuke could still feel the warmth of the blonde girl in front of him. 
His heart pounded to the beat of hers and their moans came in pants together. Sasuke placed a hand on her waist at the same time Shizuka's hand came up to bury itself in his black locks. The both of them were out of breath and drowning in their emotions, they broke apart. Sasuke, Naruto mumbled, looking at Sasuke through heavy eyes. Shizuka, Sasuke breathed back, and then he smiled. That beautiful smile Naruto had seen before, when they had made themselves free. The smile that had made his heart beat this fast for the first time in his life. I didn't think. Well, Naruto smiled back, you were wrong. Sasuke smiled and closed his eyes, letting his head lean backwards against the wall. Well, Sasuke asked. Well what? Sasuke's lack of an answer was enough. Fine, I like you. You, like me. Sasuke smirked. Damn, okay, maybe I have a crush on you, Naruto said through clenched teeth. Only a crush, Shizuka. Naruto glared at Sasuke. Don't push it. Both teenagers smiled at each other, and Sasuke stepped closer, leaning upwards to get another kiss. Naruto grabbed a hold of his shoulders, holding him back. What about Itachi? Screw Itachi. Shizuka seemed to think about it for a moment. I'd rather screw you. The loud crack of Sasuke hitting his head against the wall when he lost his balance was worth remembering. Shizuka only laughed at him as she picked his keys out of his pocket and walked over to Sasuke's room. Sasuke followed her questioningly with his eyes when she opened the door and stepped inside. I'm sleeping with you tonight, Uchiha, she said. Sasuke felt his face reddening, and Shizuka's eyes narrowed, but no touching, and we will sleep about a foot apart. Sasuke smiled, nodded and followed her into his room. She had no idea that it was enough for him just being around her. I will continue this story in next part till then we weave offline.